<laughs> All right, so hey everyone, in this video I will teach you how you can do a 3D plot by 2D functions in Python. So basically, to not waste your time, we will see how we can make this Python. It will be more like a tutorial, step-by-step -step tutorial, to teach you how to do it. By the way, I got this thing. So this, if you might guess, is a graphical tablet, where I can use it to show you my drawing skills. I can also do this. This did definitely not take me 10 tries to make it. I also can do... I also can do this, I also can do this, but anyway, for example, here you can see that I can draw, for example, a stickman. This is some art, you know. Anyway, that being said, if you're interested in the video, grab on some notes and let's go, shall we? So let me put myself right over here. Alright, so let's go. Alright, now to draw a 3D function using Python with Matplotlib, it is a, let's say, two, three, maximum four step process. So before actually showing you the steps to draw a 3D function, I want to actually take the time and explain to you something very quick. Now you see here, when you're drawing, let's say, just a regular function. So here and then here. You have X, you have Y. Since you are drawing it within Python or any programming language, what you often do, for example, here we have a bunch of discretized points here, so this is maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. 6 for example. And then at each of these points, we are going to evaluate our function here. Let's say that our function f of x is equal to y, for example. We evaluate it here, 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 and here, for example. Yeah, so this will give like this sort of function. Okay, now you see what we did. We had a vector of x here. So this one, this vector, which we discretized, and then we evaluated our function f of x is equal to y at each of these x. So this one, this one, this one, and so on. Now you might tell me, why am I telling you this? Because actually, here, if you want to go to draw a 3D function, or... So we say 3D function, but it's actually a function of two variables in a 3D space. So in a way, if we're going to draw our 3D coordinate system, here, here, and here, so this is x, and then here will be y, following the right-hand rule, okay? So, in order to get a 3D function, so let's say we have f of x, and then y, is equal to, let's say it's equal to 2z. For example, we can say x squared plus y squared. Now, what we are going to do in the same, exact same principle like we did here. Let me actually change another color. So this was 2D. It is the same principle a little bit in 3D. What you gotta do here is to discretize your X and Y grid. So here along X, tam, 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 and then as well along Y, okay. And then what you are going to do is to form a grid. You are going to form a grid here. So this point, this point, this point, here and then here as well, roughly, and then here and here. Let's say this is our grid point, where we are going to evaluate our 3D function. Now it is in each of these points that we are going to evaluate our function z. So for example, here, this point will be here. Let me actually change the color. Okay. So this point, let's say at z it is here, at this point it is here, and at this point it is here, here, let's say it's very high, so, and then... Like, you just see the example here. Okay, and then this one is very low. And then what you're going to do is to join all of these points in such a way that we get a somewhat looking 3D function. So this was in a bit the logic behind drawing a 3D function within Python. So a function of two variables in the 3D space. Let's come back to our Visual Studio code. And let me show you the, the three or four steps you need to follow in order to draw a 3D function. It's only for the side this for now. Okay. Now, first things first. You want to draw a function. You can either, so it's, feel free to either prepare your plot or to prepare your function. Now, I will go ahead and first set up my environment where I will draw my 3D function. Okay. So first of all, you import matplotlib.pyplot. As you might guess, this will be the library you will be using whenever you want to plot something. Okay, so traditionally, what we are used to do is, for example, do a plt.plot here, and then we do a plt.show. 
Okay, so I can go ahead, instead of doing a PLOT, a plot, I do a so fig and then axis is equal to plt.subplots. If I go ahead and run this, you will see that you get an empty plot. So this is cool and all, but this is not a 3D plot. We want to have a 3D space, 3D space of x, y, and z. To do this in Python and within matplotlib, we see here, we said figure and axis is equal to plt.subplots. Now, by default, matplotlib generates a 2D plot. We want to set it to 3D. It's very straightforward. Here, within the subplots, you specify. So, subplots, you can see it's already giving me a hint. Subplot underscore kw, standing for keyword argument, or keyword rather. Okay. You specify this as a dictionary. Okay. And th within this dictionary, you pass in a key called projection, and then this key will be equal to 3D. So you might guess that we are going to set the projection to 3D. If I go ahead and run this code, you can see that now we successfully generated a 3D blind plot. Okay, so this is good for now. So know that we prepared our plot. So let me add a comment saying step one will be to set setting our 3D environment. environment. Okay, so let's say that this was step two, step one. Step two would be to create our functions of 2D variables. Okay, so remember here, we said that we need to actually generate a grid, a 2D grid. To achieve this 2D grid generation, so let me do step two is generate a 2D grid. We are going to use a function within NumPy that is called mesh grid. I will show you what it does in a second. Let's create two vectors here, x and then y. It is equal to an np.lin space, and it will have to import the numpy module, so import numpy and then as np, okay? I copy down this here and here. Now let's say for the sake of simplicity that we are going to generate a grid, so this is x and this is y. We are going to generate a grid from, let's say from 0 to 10 across x, and from 0 to 10 across y. So in a way, what are we going to do? So here this will be the first point, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then as well here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight, nine, and then ten. I messed up the scaling, but never mind. And then we are going to generate here a grid. So this one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth. I hope I know you get the idea. Now, you first create this vector right here. So this one is going to be your first vector. This one, all of this, actually including this one as well. And then all of this one right here. Okay. And it deleted it. Nice. You can see here that to generate this vector x and this vector y, you use the np.lin space. So, whether you know it or not, the np.lin space generates an, an array or a vector from zero so the first argument is the start the second argument is the end for example we want to add it at 10 and then we specify the number of elements let's say for now we are going to take five elements and then same goes for y so it starts from zero it ends at 10 and it has five elements so let me hide this one for now okay and let me go ahead and print x and let me print why? You can see that we successfully generated our very simple array. Now, I will use a function within NumPy that is called MeshGrid to actually generate so our grid right here. Okay, so let me show you again. All of this internal part will be generated by a function we call MeshGrid. Now, what you notice here, so let me just, let's see just this part right here. Okay. What you will notice is, if this is your x vector, so let me again take another color, so this one, this one, this one, this one, and then this one. If this is our first row, our second row will be this one, and then this one, this one, this one, and this one. Our, our third row will be this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, and so on and so forth. Okay, so what you will notice is, you can see this x vector here, this one, is repeating itself here, with a different value of y. And then the same, it is repeating itself here with a different value of y, and then so on, and so forth. This is exactly what the 
mesh grid function achieves in NumPy. So I can go ahead and show you. Okay, here we then use um, np dot mesh grid. You can see here you can read the documentation if you want, but I am here representing the documentation. So we have the np.meshgrid, we pass in the x along the x-axis and the y along the y-axis, okay? We save this as a content, because I want to actually show you what this content is about. So we print our content. Let me run this. Okay, so we can see here that the content of this np.meshgrid, so what this function returns, is, first of all, it is an array. It is an array, so let me actually remove this thing and let me rerun so we get just the content. Okay, so this it's this array. You can notice that, okay, here is an array, okay? And then within this array, we have actually two arrays. So this is the first array, and this is the second array. Okay, you see here, we have 0, 2.5, 5, 7.5, 10. This corresponds to these values, for example, 0, 2.5, 2 5, 7.5, and 10. And then you see that this value is repeated across let's say five times. In this array right here, you see we have zero, 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 and then you have two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, and then you have five, 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 seven and a half, seven and a half, and then ten, ten, ten. Doesn't this look exactly the same as we did just here? So this is zero, two and a half, five, seven and a half, ten, or y is equal to zero. So this is, so here all the x will be zero, y, zero, Two and a half zero five zero seven and a half zero ten zero, and then you go to the next row. So this one here y will be equal to two and a half. So this point will be zero and two and a half. This point will be two and a half two and a half. This point will be five and two and a half, and so on and so forth. So I hope by now we get a little bit the idea on how this mesh grid function works, and what we are going to do here. We are going to usually how it is done. We extract the returns of this np.meshgrid as capital X and capital Y. If I go ahead and print capital X and then capital Y, okay, I go ahead and run this code. You'll see that here is our X vector. Here is our Y vector. Now, how you should understand this is that this X vector represents it represents the X coordinates of our mesh grid. So this one right here, so the first return of the np.mesh grid represents the x coordinate of all our grid. So it represents the x coordinate of all of these points right here. And then the second y, intuitively, it represents the exactly the y coordinate of all our mesh grid. Now having this in mind, we successfully generated our grid. Now the second or the next step would be to actually evaluate our function at these grid points. So let me say here, three, we evaluate, evaluate our f of x and y function. It is very straightforward. You do, for example, up here, z is equal to, let's say, x plus y. For instance, we are going to start with something very simple. But before that, I want to actually show you something. So let me do here an x dot plot, and we are going to plot x cross y. If I show you this plot here, and then let me just remove this for instance, just to show you something. If I plot x and y, okay, you see we have um, this, which is not what I wanted to show you, because I have to actually use the dot scatter. So dot scatter to draw a little bit the dots. You can see here, this is our grid. Now on each of these points, so in this point 0, 0, we are going to evaluate our f function on this one, on this one, and this one, this one, this one, and so on, and so forth. Okay, so let me go back. Okay, now we do x plus y, for example. This, you can do any two variables functions you want. But once you did that, and then you do x dot scatter of x, y, and then z. If you do this, and I run the result, and I didn't show it, so let me show it actually. Okay, I rerun. You can see that here is our 3D function. It somewhat looks like a 3D function, or a 2D variables function in a 3D space, rather. Okay, so it is a good start. Now, whether you know it or not, in matplotlib there is also other functions. So the functions here that you can use to plot a 3D surface, one of them is plot, I think, 
Surface. Plot Surface. If I'm not missing the name. Ah, there we go. So there is a function called Plot Surface, which can allow you to plot the surface of a 2D variables function. Okay, so this one works. Let's actually increase here to, let's say, 10. Okay, so here and then here. I run this again. You can see here is our function once again. Now, if you go to the matplotlib documentation and then you search for you search for here plot types, okay, you'll see we get a bunch of plot types. What you are interested in is either contour, f, but rather this plot surface, plot tri surface, scatter, and so on. Plot wireframe as well. If I go to the plot underscore surface, it will explain you how to do it. Okay, so everything is clear. Now, something you can do to further improve your plot is you add a color bar. And I do here, for example, color map is equal to jet. Okay, so if I rerun the code, you'll see that now we have a 3D function, two variables. Okay, now we might look a little bit blocky. All you gotta do is increase the size of our x and y vector here. Let's say it is 101 here and then here. I go ahead and rerun the code and you'll see it is much more smooth. Now, of course, you can go ahead and draw another 2D, 3D function. Now you can go ahead and change this function. Let's set it, for example, to np.sqrt of x squared plus y squared. Okay, I run this. And then you can see that here is our squared function. Okay, so let me actually mirror this to minus 10, minus 10. Okay, I run the code. And then, oh, and then I'm, I'm actually, I just noticed here that this is supposed to be x, y, and z. Okay, let me rerun this one this time. And there we go. Here is our square root of x squared plus y squared function. It looks pretty cool. If I apply the sign to this function, so I do np.sign here, okay, and I rerun the code, you'll see that this is our weirdly looking function. Now we have this, I can go ahead and increase the number of elements, once again, let's set it to 1001, okay, I rerun this, you'll see that here is our function. If I multiply here by some factor, let's say, times 0.5, I run this, you'll see that now we get this function, which looks pretty cool. By this, hopefully, you learn how to display a functions of two variables within Python. So, to sum up again, we imported the libraries matplotlib and numpy. We set up our environment for a 3D plot, here by specifying subplot keyword, setting the projection to 3D. We define a grid, a 2D grid, First of all, by defining the x and y vector using the np.lint space. We then created a mesh grid from it, and then we define it our function simply by using the outputs of this mesh grid. And then you use the plot.surface with the color map, for example, jet, to display your plot. You can see here, this is what we got. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more of these, like, quick type of tutorials, let me know in the comments. I very much appreciate reading your comments. Anyway, I hope you learned something new. By the way, if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to follow me on either of my social. I have a LinkedIn, a YouTube, and a GitHub channel, so feel free to follow me in either of these socials. If you feel like generous and want to support the channel, check the description. I have also made a PayPal account. For some reason, if you feel generous, of course. That being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching, and I see you in the next one. I hope I'll nail it. There we go. I see you in the next one.